Tons of sunscreen brands, 100% mineral sunscreens, aren't actually 100% mineral sunscreens. Does your mineral sunscreen have hidden chemical UV filters in them? I get a lot of requests from my patients for mineral sunscreen recommendations. People have heard on the news or on TikTok that chemical sunscreens are bad for their health, and now they're worried that wearing chemical sunscreens is worse for their health than UV radiation, a class one carcinogen. Some patients also have very sensitive skin that happens to tolerate mineral sunscreens better than chemical sunscreens. Like I've mentioned before, I primarily wear chemical sunscreens, so I am clearly comfortable using them. But it is important to me that I respect my patients' requests, so I still search for and am trying to find excellent mineral sunscreens on their behalf. But why is it so hard? This should be easy, right? For example, I see this product. It's the Axis Y Complete No Stress Physical Sunscreen. Physical implies that the active sun protection ingredient should be zinc or titanium. And when I look at the ingredients list, I see zinc oxide as the second ingredient after water. It has an SPF of 50 plus and a PA rating of four plus, good protection. Okay, so far so good, maybe this is the one. Then further down on the ingredients list, butyloctyl salicylate. And that's the problem. Butyloctyl salicylate, you'll find it on a ton of so-called 100% mineral sunscreens. But take a look at the structure of butyloctyl salicylate and octosalate, an FDA-regulated chemical UV filter. What do you notice? Butyloctyl salicylate is just one inactive ingredient that is structurally very similar to regulated chemical UV filters. This has been an open secret for years, and it was made more broadly known by the cosmetic chemist who goes by Lab Muffin. I like her analogy that butyloctyl salicylate and octosalate are like twins, but one of them has longer hair. So in my eyes, this is not a physical sunscreen. This is actually a hybrid sunscreen with the physical or mineral filter zinc oxide plus another ingredient that's very similar to octosalate, a chemical UV filter. Butyloctyl salicylate is the most common SPF boosting or sunscreen doping ingredient that I've seen on so-called mineral sunscreens. And this one's at least easier to remember since butyloctyl salicylate and octosalate at least sound a little bit like each other. Other similar sounding ingredients are tridecyl salicylate and caproloyl salicylic acid, which are also like octosalate, and ethylhexyl methoxycrylene, which sounds like the chemical filter octocrylene. Then it gets even trickier because some ingredient names don't sound anything like the chemical UV filter they're similar to. For example, based on the name, would you think that dihexyl syringolidine malinate is like the UV filter octanoxate? So that's one of the reasons why I really dislike looking for mineral sunscreens, in addition to the fact that they often have a chalky texture and leave a white cast. That's why so many com companies add these under the radar chemical UV filter like ingredients to make their mineral sunscreens look and feel better than mineral sunscreens usually do. So by now, maybe you've checked your so-called 100% mineral sunscreen, and maybe you didn't find any of the hidden ingredients that I mentioned. Hooray! Share the name of yours with us since I'm always looking for better, actually, mineral sunscreens. If you don't want to go through that effort, here are a few mineral sunscreens to get you started. Number one, Biore UV Kids Pure Milk Sunscreen. I like it because it's cheap and easy to spread, but it's greasy. Number two, Pyongyang Yours Atto Mild Sunscreen, which is relatively inexpensive as well, but it's a little bit thick and hard to spread. Number three, Isden. The previous two that I mentioned, I tolerate, and I consider them good enough, but not great and not amazing. They are what they say they are, actual mineral sunscreens, and they're affordable, and if you're not picky, they're good enough for most people, especially for the price. This Isden one, though, I actually like it. It doesn't change the way that my skin looks or feels, and it wears well by itself or with makeup. It's easy to spread. I didn't notice as much of a white cast as with the Biore option or the Pyongyang Yur option. But this is where we start to get expensive. For 50 mils of this Isden sunscreen, it's 46 US dollars, and 100 mils is a tiny bit cheaper per volume at 73 US dollars. It also does have a little bit of an odor to it, which dis disappears quickly, but if you're sensitive to smells, you might not be a fan. And finally, the Pavis Mineral Sunscreen. I've talked about it before, and I still think it's the most cosmetically elegant mineral sunscreen that I've tried. Like the Isden, it spreads nicely onto the skin, there's no prominent white cast, and my skin looks great when I apply it with or without makeup. But if you thought that the Isden was expensive at $46 for 50 mLs, this one is a whopping $140 for just 30 mLs. 
I like the sunscreen a lot, but as someone who happily uses chemical sunscreens too, I can find cosmetically elegant chemical sunscreens that are just 10 to $15 for 50 mLs. I find it really hard to justify spending $148 on a small amount of mineral sunscreen. When I reach for a mineral sunscreen, let's say because my skin is feeling sensitive, then I'll be using the Biore or the Isten. But if you have tons of money and want to feel like a princess and want only a mineral sunscreen, then Pavis might be it. If you like content like this, hit the like button and I hope to see you at a future video.